wanted to make a video comparing the longevity of DCF Dyneema composite fabric and high quality sil nylons. To do this, I'm going to take a look at two Mountain Laurel Design shelters, one made of DCF and the other made of 30 denier sil nylon to see how they've fared over the years. One of these is my tent, a 2015 Duomed made from 0.74 ounces per square yard DCF. I've used this tent around 100 nights, but a lot of those were hard nights with 30 mile per hour winds gusting probably a lot higher than that and blowing sand and stuff. Because it endured a lot of thrashing around and because I pitched it tight, the fabric has stretched in places and you'll see what I mean in a second. And because I've used it in the desert, the zipper sliders have worn out a lot. I think I've replaced them about five times or something like that. In my opinion, sliders tend to wear out much more quickly on DCF tents than sil nylon or sil poly tents because DCF tents are high tension and therefore put a lot of stress on the zipper. High stress tends to grind sand into the interior sides of the slider instead of giving the malleable teeth the opportunity to sort of bend around the grains of sand. Because nylon or polyester have some give to them, they don't seem to put as much strain on zippers and therefore sliders seem to not wear out quite as quickly. The other tent is my friend Porter's Mountain Laurel Design Solo Mid XL made from 30 denier sil nylon. He bought this tent in spring of 2017 and has used it around 150 nights. He's never had to replace the sliders and the fabric appears to be in good condition. Likely the fabric's hydrostatic head or water resistance is much reduced as a result of spending many nights in southern Utah, but it's still waterproof in his experience. Anyway, let's take a look at these two tents to see how different fabrics age on very similar tents, which have undergone very similar use. All right, just comparing uh, 2015 Duomid DCF to a, what year is this border? 2016, maybe 2017. MLD Solomid XL in the 30D Sil Nylon just to see how they've aged. I'm pretty sure that Porter has more nights on this Solomid XL than I have on this Duomid. I guess I'll just start with some of the problems with the Duomid. <clears throat> the hem stretched and um, because there's high tension on the zipper, I've had to replace the slider probably like once a year at least, which isn't the end of the world. But even here you can see it like wanting to pull apart. Yeah. Um, there are little pinholes everywhere that are hard to see. I will cut to a clip where I do a close-up on some of those so you can see, but basically some of these strands are wanting to pull away from the mylar here and there, and I'll, I'll show you that in detail in a little bit. But anyway, the, the hem is all floppy. You can't really get a rectangle pitch on it anymore. And the zipper's wavy, whereas it's pretty obvious that the Solo Mid XL is still just like the same shape it always was. You can get a good rectangular pitch on that. Um, you mentioned the zipper. The slider has never needed to be replaced on this one. Um, there's no deformation in the hem or anything. It still pitches exactly like it did when it was new. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some of the Silicone has worn off, but it still seems perfectly rainproof and it can, you know, be reapplied if you really wanted to up the waterproofing on it. Um, but 
Yeah, other than that, there's no damage or anything to the stitching or tie outs, and it pretty much behaves exactly like, you know, it did 150 nights ago. With using it for base camping in the Uintas, um, combined with personal trips, um, it's at least 150. It was being unpacked and packed slightly less frequently, but it was also being left up in the sun um, under like high tension all day. So maybe okay. slightly different wear, but um, I don't. I don't think that. I don't think that affects it whatsoever. Uh, with a pyramid tent, and probably I think the only two materials that appeal to me anymore are silk nylon and silk poly. Mm -hmm. um, DCF. I don't. I really bothers me that it gets permanently stretched like that. Yeah. Um, it's expensive and it behaves kind of weird in the wind. It's very jerky. Yeah, it thrashes. It thrashes around. And, yeah. Um, you know, I just you know I'm just not a fan of it anymore. I don't think there's any serious drawbacks to silk nylon, and I think increasingly silk poly seems like a viable option. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll probably never sell that, even if I get another tent. Mm -hmm. So, maybe I'll just do like a quick inspection type thing. I already showed you the sort of wavy zipper. Porter was just saying. DCF just doesn't seem to age as well. I've put patches like this, for example, because this entire strand here of DCF was sort of like the mylar was kind of like pulling away from it. So I patched that kind of thinking that was the only spot until I started inspecting more and saw that it was kind of like that everywhere. Okay, I found this spot which is on the back panel of the tent which would be above my sleeping area and there's several such places throughout the tent but this is a good example where the mylar and the dyneema are kind of pulling apart along this entire strand of dyneema and I've got some reflected sunlight behind it so you can see all those tiny pinholes and more and more of those are happening. So that's the sort of thing that is sort of making this tent no longer usable. I've patched some places like this, but it just keeps happening so you can't really patch them all. There you see if I can, if I pull it can see those holes even a little bit better. The hems over here are wavy too, or not wavy, but like loose, but not as bad as I'd say the front of the tent. I don't think that the rear one is as bad as the front either. And also, I don't know if you can see here, but that middle panel is all kind of wrinkly. And that's just sort of like some permanent stretch. Just some like permanent stretch that happens with DCF. And here's the Solo Mid XL with 150 nights on it. Really nowhere to speak of. I mean, it's probably, like you were saying, the hydrostatic head is probably not as good, like having used it in the sand a lot and stuff, but it seems largely fine. So Ron Bell, the owner of Mountain Laurel Design, says that 
says on his website that Sil Nylon has a slightly longer service life than DCF. And comparing these two shelters, I think this is probably true. I don't know that I would want to use my Duomed this year because there are several pinholes right above my sleeping area on the back wall, suggesting more that I can't find probably, or more that could develop soon. This isn't necessarily to say that Sil Nylon is better than DCF. That would be too simplistic. DCF tents are a little bit lighter, have great tear strength, their rigidity feels very secure. They also don't stretch when they get wet, so these are benefits. But Sil Nylon is cheaper, it's nearly as strong, it packs smaller, and as we can see, it lasts a bit longer. It does, however, sag when it gets wet, and it weighs a bit more than DCF. So everyone has to decide on these considerations on their own, but I hope this visual helps. I hope that it helps to see that Sil Nylon does indeed last a little longer than DCF when used similarly on a similar product. Mm -hmm.